Howdy, peeps. On this video, we're going to try to do a Bobby Goodson uh, intro. Uh, Stevie pushes me in with Waddy. Uh, while we set the boom with the skitter, we uh, managed to uh, blow us a hose trying to get the uh, boom set. And uh, But uh, Stevie loads up Chris while I'm fixing the blowed hose on the big skitter. And uh, get back up and running and... Get mama set up. She's cribbed up and ready to rock and roll with the yard with two uh, machines in it. Hope y'all enjoy. Okay, so we're coming in. This is a job Werner's logged uh, last year. Luke said, I hope you're enjoying my nine loads of gravel I put on that thing. <laughs> yeah, Luke, we're, we're, we're enjoying it so far. Uh, you could have put a couple more loads down for us. There's a couple spots that don't have gravel on it. Uh, but I'm sure it's down there if we dig down a little bit. But here's Whitey's in Loho, and she and it spins tires till I don't get took off quick enough. Listen. <laughs> Stevie got ready and goes, Oh my God, I'm back here burning rubber, he said. <laughs> Whitey is a beast. I love this truck. One well, first thing we did when we got this truck was put a big old push bumper on the front of it just for this. Uh, these situations like this, you get out there, you want to run out there and skitter and push the boom in. So we got Whitey rigged up to where Whitey can do the pushing. Whitey's got a transfer case, and you can put it on the low side so it's easy on the torque converter. Now a lot of people say you should have a manual transmission in that truck, and no, I don't want a manual transmission in an off-road truck. I want a torque converter. Because that's what's going to get me uh, put the power to the ground without spinning and uh, axle hopping. The only problem is with this style of transmission, if you don't put it in the, the transfer case and low, you can heat up the torque converter in it. And actually, you can smell some burn in it. So, uh, but in the trees on the left, you're seeing with the rings on there, them trees all got to be cut. The blue rings is what we bought, but the black rings is what the county's marking because the county wants me to cut some trees off their bank because they can widen the road up then. And here I'm pulling into the yard now, and this is where we're going to set the boom. Where Big Daddy's got scraped off with a dozer. Now I'm going to grab it at 90 degrees with the big grapple. As you can see, Stevie's been yarding for a couple days with the Den Den. He's about stacked in. And now we're getting ready to set the, the slasher saw up and start working up on this side. And between him and Big Mama and this big yard we got, thanks to this clear cut that they got out here by the yard, we can stack up enough logs to keep us logging till the trucking can get caught up. See, because right now we still have like four trucks broke down. I think at this point right now you're seeing four trucks broke down. That's why I'm not in Blackie. Derek's actually stole Blackie to haul uh, colored mulch in Blackie to mulch customers. Because of the wet kit. It takes a dual line wet kit and a you know PTO wet kit truck to uh, run the walking floors. Same tools it takes to run a detached low boy. 
And here I'm going to come in in a big skitter uh, and grab it. Now, the, the we like to set the boom with a big skitter because it's got a dual arch and it can raise up in the air higher. It don't handle the load real good, but we usually, Stevie's going to be back here on a bulldozer. He can't see, but he's pushing with the bulldozer. Stevie's doing most of the work, and what I'm doing is lifting the front end up in the air off the dollies and then guiding it. I'm doing pretty much, I'm pulling a little bit, but not much. Stevie's doing most of it back here at the bulldozer as far as moving the weight. I'm mostly just carrying the front end and, guy, and steering it in with this skitter. And here we get ready to go. So first, my first task is to take it 90 degree from the road and then try to hog to my left as much as possible to cut out this turn and then set Big Mama up to where she's in the right position. Because this yard does get kind of tight because Stevie's already used up quite a bit of the yard stacking himself in for a couple days. And the reason I'm going slow right here is I'm waiting for Stevie to catch up to me in the dozer and get to doing most of the pushing. certain equipment manufacturers run your hydraulic hoses in a ring that cuts them. That's a good idea. Let's try that! So what we're going to do now, Stevie grabbed Junkyard Skitter. It's a single arch. Now the thing with single arch is if you're going to move with a single arch, you got to jack the dollies up. But we only got 10 more feet to go, or 15. We don't want to pick the dollies up, so Stevie's backing his left tire up on that log pile to give the single arch a little bit of height. Now we've traded places and I'm on the bulldozer now and I'm going to let Stevie raise the front end up there as high as he can and not pull on it because it'll pull down on the front end of the boom and Chris is watching this so we don't tear the dollies off this thing because they're swung down right now and see how Stevie dropped down Chris stopped us so Stevie's going to have to let go and get his butt the rear end of the skitter back up in the air so we can go another five, 10 feet. And then we figure it's set. And that's why he's driving over the trees over there. He's using that to get the skitter picked up off the ground. So when he clamps down onto the tongue, it's raising the tongue up high enough. Single arch carries the weight really good. If we're gonna go down the road or something, I'd rather pull it with the single arch than the dual arch. Cause the dual arch, we don't have the big bore kit on our cylinders and it don't actually carry the weight real well. But these single arches carry the weight great. They handle the boom great. Junkyard Skitter handles the boom great. But it just don't carry it high enough. Now we're gonna go forward a little bit more. And Chris just ends up, Chris ends up being the one that stops us. He's like, all right, stop there before you tear the dollies up. So we decide, heck with it, this is where we'll set the boom at. So this is where the boom's gonna set. And Stevie's going to drop it, and uh, I'm going to get on the boom, and we're going to start setting this thing out and cribbing it up, getting it ready for Big Mama. So here's the spot. It's blowed right there. That hose right here is blowed right there where it rubs on that. And I don't want to be a complainy pants. My goal ain't to make people look bad, back on it. Uh, that's been a good skitter for us. We're happy with that skitter. And that skitter Roger's driving's got over 20,000 hours on it. So we've been, we've been around these, put it this way, we've been around them a while. But now that, that's my complaint. Now, I got a six year old kid that could tell you what's gonna happen with that hose running through that loop like that. That should have been caught on the engineering board. 
you know. That's my beef with this. I'm not going to say what company that is, but that's my beef with that company. And they also run electric cords right through the hydraulics. So then you got your hydraulic hoses chewing up your wiring harness. And all the components in the machine's great. It's a great machine. But them little knickknacks makes it a pain in the butt. I wanted to set the camera up and capture this view. I never did really show us using a grapple any. Well, this is the first we've used the grapple since i done the uh, work to the pins and bushings. Now, at the point I'm editing this video right now, we've used it on a couple jobs, and it actually is working really good. It's really a sweet art to use it. You know, it ain't so daggone clangy, and you know, you can hear a rattle out grapple. You listen to some operating up there, you can hear a rattle out grapple. And this grapple sounds snug, it sounds good, it operates smooth with the brakes set up again, and it, everything adjusted upright. Uh, now what I'm doing with this long log right here, and with the camera view you can't really see it, but I'm picking up the downriggers down there, and what you gotta do is you pick these outriggers up when you're in softer ground like this, which this ground ain't real soft, but it's soft enough I'm gonna, you set a long log underneath them, See how I'm pushing this log under? You set your outriggers down on these logs. I'll set one on either side. See, I'm trying to get it up underneath there. And then I'll lift that boom up on that log. So the cab, the house section of the slasher sets up on them logs. Now, what you can also do is use them downriggers since they're up in the air. They cradle, you cut up a few 16 foot heavy logs and you sit on top of them. So the logs acts like a counterweight, so it keeps your machine from bouncing and carrying on. Trailer mount boom's not the most funnest rig to use off-road. Uh, Werner's got the 250s, the Tiger Cat 250s, and I really like them. Uh, Cotton Top's got his uh, 2454, I believe is what they are. That would be a sweetheart. Paul's got his Daewoo, or Doosan whatever size it is, I bet that'd be a bad unit. Um, them type of tracks that are, I think Lyrings has got them at 250 now. I think Steve got them, got mad at 250. So I mean, them track machines are the sweethearts when it comes in the yard. Now the Den Den does a fine job, but the Den Den just ain't quite got the height. The reach is a little less, but that ain't so bad. It's just the height mostly. With the Den Den, what aggravates the guy when he's running the Den Den, Loading trucks and <clears throat> stuff like that is just not being able to see quite high enough. But Stevie cheats, he's got his mats and stuff, he gets it up on his crane mats and it gives him some height and it ain't bad. I loaded a few loads off of this setting, perched up on them crane mats and it wasn't bad at all loading in. See here I'm on, here's a little better shot, you see me raising up and down over there. And this, with our setup, they gotta be at least a 14 foot log or longer to do it. And this is a 14 footer right on the money, or 14 six is what this log is. And you kind of get them down there. See how I got both of them up there? And I'm gonna swing this grapple back so I can use the grapple to push them up underneath, roll it up underneath, and then bring them down, and then you're setting that weight down on them. So then you got a longer pad. So if you go to sinking in the dirt or whatever, you got plenty more throw on your downriggers and stuff like that. You keep them, the road suspension up out of the mud on this thing. You let one of these trailer mount booms go down to where they're all sink in the mud and they're an aggravating son of a buck to get out. And you keep the mud off your dollies, feet and all that stuff so your mud ain't up in there screwing up your, you know, grease, the area on the pins where you grease and all that stuff, you know, all that stuff ain't being screwed. Now these two trees I'm cutting up are poplar. Our markets right now are calling for poplar because this corona mass, poplar is what we could sell. And I'm getting cocky with this tree. Now look, a lot of people ask us in the, this great hardwood, you know, why we don't use like a processing head. And here's why, look at this tree. Look how long it takes me. Right now I'm trying to make a great decision. I should cut, what I should cut is a nine or 10, I should cut a 10 footer on my end. I think that's what I do maybe. 
See, I can't even commit to making this cut. I think an eight is what I ought to do and spin that around. You're supposed to cut the tree from the butt up. That poplar laying beside me there on the ground, that's shaped to face the right way. This tree ain't. And there's a spot Stevie's gonna have to, there's a log I'm gonna throw over Stevie to trim. Cause I don't wanna take the time to trim it. I can trim it fine with this, with the super kitty here, but I don't wanna take the time to slow down and do it. I got scare fix. I need to be hauling logs right now. I got my log trailer up. Me and old number nine's gonna go get my stick wagon. We're gonna go get to hauling some logs here in a minute. See now you'll see, see the, the this tree got lightning struck or something years ago. And look at all the dope in the butt of this thing. The butt log needs a 12 footer is what the butt log needs to be. I don't think I quite got a 12 footer there. Looks like I cut it at a 10. Look at that second log. It's gonna take sawing this log and doing the upgrades and stuff on this log. It's gonna be, these two logs come off this poplar tree. It's gonna be a little bit of work because of the, and what it needed was some length. And that top log I just set down, I think it's an eight footer. And an eight footer on a grade log that's got face lumber in it, which is what that might have a little bit in if you earn it. That's not good because I don't give you much length for your upgrades. You gotta have length on your bottom part logs in the tree. Enough to make upgrades. What's your shortest board for a good FAS board? Your shortest you can be is eight foot. But you usually like to have at least a 10 foot log on a grade log. So that gives you two foot to trim or gobble up or whatever if you got a little defect on the end or something or you or what have you it gives you room to work with to make to upgrade that board and that second log i think I cut a 14 footer and i'm throwing them down making me a stack to where i stack these heavy trees up on the downriggers there now the last couple cuts i'd say we got a 10 and an 8 and i put that 8 on the lower grade side of the tree because that's going to be one common cut down there anyways and then com one common cut, you can take you all the way down to a six footer if you had to. Which ain't gonna be necessary because that's a good looking tree. That's gonna make good one common number. I doubt there's hardly too common until you get down low on the close to the heart. And I'd say, well I'm gonna cut this beaver tail off the end of this thing. I'd say the top of that tree is laying on the ground down there. Yeah, that's good. The hell is my big face more than that. Stevie's over loading on Chris. Having two rigs in the yard really helps. That. Yeah, I see. Look at that. Oof. Boy, that's a rough trip. I don't think there's any. There might be a little bit of face in that log, but I doubt it. I think that's all one and two common. Maybe even three. Well, we don't have three popper right now, so it'd be one or two common or cold. And that top log I just cut is two common and cold. I don't know. There might be a couple one common boards in there, but not much. And I'm just going to cut that scrap off the end of that thing. Now, you can do plenty good trimming with this saw, especially with an experienced operator like John, that chipper guy. He'd be good at trimming this stuff. He's got a hand fab saw a lot like ours on their new Circo boom. I think he got a Circo 300, didn't he? Does anybody know? Comment below. I think it's a 300. That'd be a pretty good rig that he got. That Cook's got, you know. There's a lot of good equipment being used logging that right now. We all, as a logging as a logging industry, we can't do a lot of complaining. I don't think we got a lot of good equipment out there running. All of us do, and we're running the older stuff for the most part. So, if I'm sitting here talking about how good the equipment is, and we're running the older stuff, that's saying a lot of good about a lot of other people. Now, that truck Air Chris is driving, that thing's been totaled once or twice. That tells you where how we are on our trucks. That's not the original cab 
or hood for that truck. That's a whole new body. That's a different body on that truck on that frame. I think that's the second cab and the second hood on that truck. That hood we got for that truck, that is actually a new hood for that truck. And the cab come out of a, uh, I think a sleeper cab converted to a day cab. I forgot, where did we got that cab for that truck? No, I can't think of it for a lot of it. But Hank down there at Hank Science, he painted it. What a good paint job. Uh, See if we can pull her out of here. This part's gonna suck, I promise you. All right, come on. Left my wrench on the other side. Oh, come on. I gave up trying to stay clean years ago. You got to. If you're gonna get anything done in this job, you're gonna get dirty. That's just all there is to it. It ain't a job for clean people. Come on, you son of a buck, why are you fighting me the whole way? Well, it's just going to. She's just going to fight me the whole freaking way. Would you do that? Come on. Would you? Look at this mess all the way off. And why? So you can brag your little hoes friends about this, huh? Why would you do this to a guy? I'm trying to be your friend here. Looks like you got many though. <laughs> it's easy to be cocky when you got a lot of friends, but you're about to go to a lonely place, Mr. Ho. A lonely place. Okay. I will say one thing. This company here did get me off on them flat face fittings and I love them. I brag these things up like crazy. All right, here we go. See if we can get it pulled through. Okay, gonna have to yank it like a minute. Hey, oh my. Well, there's a culprit. Now I wonder if that was a chafing issue. And I wonder if the chafing issue come from the fact that it's put to that ring. Let's see. One point four four four. Where is my dad gum? Roger. Setting in my daggone bucket. If it had been a snake, it'd have bit me. All right. One point four four four. Is what we gotta go, go, go. One point four four four. Is what we gotta go. Yeah, yeah. Patience, quite a bit, actually. All right, I'll give you a quick tip for the John Deere guys out there. Uh, you got your skidder making a howling racket in here on a grapple skidder on these old gravel skidders. Take you an old pair of cutter pants. And pull us off. See it? Shove an old pair of cutter pants in there. Then when you put your outside guard on, them cutter pants insulate it from this guard. It hoses against this guard's what's making your cab rattle. So you stick that insulation in there and it'll quit. It'll quiet down in there. All right, we're all fixed up. Let's go back and help Hodge Dodge. Hodge needs all the help he can get. My Lord, it is soft, soft, soft. This skitter ain't a fast skitter to start with, and it's got this old boy slow way down. Like, uh, it's like real cold. 
weight, just not got the power to weight right. Now, single arch is like a little hot rod, but a dual arch is just too heavy, too much, and just ain't enough skidder to back its weight. But I like it. I like this skidder, don't get me wrong. I use this skidder more than any of them. This is the skidder I use the most anymore. But it is slow. But usually what I'll do is when we're in pulp wood and stuff, I'll grab the pulp wood with this and a big old wad and let them single arches pull the big wood. 